because it's been raining so long and it's not raining at last, <laughs> turning into a video fest this, so this is my third one. Uh, this one is on uh, a, a core interest of mine, uh, which is autism, um, but it could apply to other people that have difficulty fitting into groups. Now, I don't, but, for, but, but for me, the, uh, the idea of um, autism um, is very much a social, social issue. Um, and, <coughs> okay, I've discovered <laughs> that I'm actually on the autistic spectrum. Not quite sure how far, but I'm definitely on it. And the idea is that, for me anyway, it worked out. I've always had difficulty in socialising in these groups because um, I don't understand. So when I was a kid, uh, I'd be being told what to do and I wouldn't be able to process it and couldn't quite get it. And then what had happened is the group would then turn on me and i get rejected from the group. So I'd then go really, really anal and focused on the rules, get all the rules written down, um, and then go into the group. And of course I've got a thousand and one rules, and then not everyone follows all the rules, and then I get upset and feel rejected again. And that sort of is a typical sign of combination of the, telling what to, to do, a group and the pressure to fit in. And because I'm different, it's really hard for me to fit in. <laughs> so subconsciously to start off with and then consciously I learned effectively to do this type of socialising which is the network socialising and I did that by learning how to choose what I do so if I choose what I do I choose who I share with what I share with and I focus on developing me as an individual um, I'm actually much more successful at socialising that way um, because my sort of social brain is very much geared on the ability to choose on controlling myself, on being myself, so I can choose to be on my own or with a group of people. And then I became much more happier, much more successful at socialising. I have lots of friends, I can chat, talk to anybody, stand up in front of groups, do lots of presentations and things like that, but I'm doing it in this network mode. So when I do a talk or when I do a presentation, I share what works for me. I, don't, I try my hardest to avoid ever telling others what to do. So I've learned to avoid, avoid like the plague, socialising in the group mode. Because A, I'm rubbish at it, um, and as a result I often get rejected. Whereas here, I can spread goodwill to lots of people without belonging to a group. So I've become much happier when I focused on this type of socialising. It just so happens my, my brain is, finds this one a lot easier as well. <laughs> I find the process of choice making actually quite easy. When I have... Now, having worked with several people who are good at doing socialised mode, who have made a choice to dump that one and go to network, and they find the process of choice making a lot harder um, than I do. So I'm guessing my brain is wired for choice. <laughs> Hence, this one's a much better one for me to learn to use to socialise. Okay, um, I'm guessing, although I don't know this, I'm guessing that other people that have problems with socialising in groups, you know, they have, they have a choice to get better at socialising in groups. I think now what they can do is move over to network socialising. They just need to be aware that there's a conscious choice between how you socialise, network mode or group mode. And then, as I've shown in previous videos, the path of how to migrate from one to the other. Some people find this one really natural, like I did. Other people find this one really natural, like I didn't. <laughs> but lots of others do. But I guess all of us have a choice between that one or that one. Okay, um, I was, yeah, that's it really. Um, yeah, that's enough. Okay, thanks a lot. See you later. Bye bye.